Thank you. Romans chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. Through this passage, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. I'd like to share the message with the title Even though we may come close to death like Epaphroditus. According to verse 30, it says, Receive him, uh, because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. According to the RSV version, it says, For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete your service to me what you have not been able to f fulfill. Apostle Paul, in the prison of Rome, considered the church of Philippi more precious and more important than his own family or his own body. And he loved that church more than anything, according to the word. But he, it's been a long time since he was imprisoned, and he can just he could not find out how the Church of Philippi was doing. And Apostle Paul was sick, and he, he was he was to be beheaded and to be sentenced to death very soon, and and so he wanted to send his son in faith. Timothy, who had gone, who had received much training in faith, and he told the church of Philippi that he would send him from verse 19 through 24. But all of a sudden, in verse 25, it changed. He said, rather than sending Timothy, I will send Epaphroditus. And as he was saying that, he said, Apostle Paul, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 20, he said, For I have no one else of kindred spirit. All the other people are just, just in the form. They come out to church in the formality. And they're just the outlooks only. And there's a lot of people who believe and who come to church without truly believing. And Apostle Paul said, all the other people are concerned for their own welfare and don't even care much about the church. And this is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, saying, For they all seek after their own interests, not, of the, not those of Christ Jesus. And he said, I'm not speaking on my own, but through the Holy Spirit, I'm speaking the Word of God. And what's the use of having, even if we had a hundred lips and say and claim that we are doing the work of God? Apostle Paul said, only Timothy and Epaphroditus are the two, only two people who actually give their lives to in doing the work of God. When I heard this, when I read this, I was shocked a lot. Sh I was shocked greatly. Apostle Paul in, this, in the prison of Rome, hope, with a little hope that maybe he would be released. But after a while, he even gave, that, gave up that hope. And that's why he said, as soon as I, I see how things go, and I trust in the Lord that I myself also will be coming shortly. However, all, why did, did Apostle Paul's mind change from, from verse 19 to through 24? He said he would send Timothy, but all of a sudden in verse 25, he said he would send Epaphroditus. 
and in the midst of all kinds of uh, all kinds of tribulations, sufferings. Now, Apostle Paul was considered the heretic of of the entire church, the rebel, and everybody thought, "Hey, how could he be in prison without sin? He must have some kind of sin to be imprisoned in the in the prison of Rome." And he received this unspeakable, this horrible treatment and misunderstanding from all the people. And to be able to to be able to give offering in that kind of situation, you you would have to have some kind of faith. I mean, g giving offering, people give offering when they feel good, when they're in good mood, and they they feel safe, uh, and they have they have that the feeling of security about that church or about that person. But to give offering to a person that, it, that has been misunderstood and, and accused as the her, uh, greatest heretic in the nation and a rebel of, of the government. But Epaphroditus was a good mediator between the church and Apostle Paul and he was considered uh, exemplary in, in his town and his, from the people around him. And finally they gave offering and the church of Philippi gathered up their offering and who they who did they send socially although he was he was a gentile they sent Epaphroditus to carry that offering to apostle Paul and Philippians chapter 4 verse 18 he said but i have received everything in full and have an Abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Now Apostle Paul said to the church of Philippi, The offering that you have given and sent, me, sent to me through Epaphroditus, through your faith, in your faith, I have received. And this is a fragrant aroma acceptable sacrifice and secondly he said it is a well-pleasing offering and gift to God and Epaphroditus ran an errand for them and not he didn't return to the church right away but when he went to see Apostle Paul he had he felt compassion for him he was over 70 years of age he could not see because of the the goo that was coming out of his eyes, his sickness, and when he was beaten, he was tired, exhausted in prison, and Epaphroditus just could not leave him. And he felt like he felt like he needed to take care of him. And so, like an assistant, he became he, he acted as an assistant to Apostle Paul from then on. From the Roman Emperor, uh, Apostle Paul was in a situation where he didn't know when he would be beheaded by the Roman Emperor. I mean, it would be easy to be an assistant to a person that w was recognized by the country, that was in a high position. But Apostle Paul was considered a, a heretic, a rebel of the nation. And it is not easy to help a person like that in prison. I mean, even if you're, you're a, a close friend, and even if you say, oh, I'll give you, I can give you anything, my friend, but when things, ha things go bad with that person, even friends turn their backs on them. However, Timothy and Epaphroditus were not, uh, did not betray Apostle Paul like all the other people. They served him to the end. And so many theologians, say that through Epaphroditus, uh, he, they speak of him as a person who stood in the very frontiers, very front, in the front lines of the battle as to take all the bullets. And the theologians describe Epaphroditus as, as that. No one came to visit Apostle Paul. He didn't have anything. There was, was no good food. His body was sick. 
and in the midst of all that, he was still concerned about the churches that he has established, just as more important than his own friends, relatives, family, even than, more than his own body. And he was in a situation that was so bad that it was n not even fathomable. But Epaphroditus stayed with him more than a year, taking care of everything for him. The Bible doesn't tell us in detail, but Apostle Paul, who was in that kind of situation, he probably thought, I wish that somebody would come and be with me and help me. And in response to that, Epaphroditus came and assisted him. And how great a support and help he must have become to Apostle Paul. How pleasing he must have been to Apostle Paul's heart. However, Epaphroditus became sick. As he was serving Christ Jesus and his work and for, Epaphrodite, and for Apostle Paul, but Apostle Paul prayed sincerely for him. The church, the congregation of Philippi, who were far away from them, were concerned. And so Apostle Paul sent Epaphroditus back to the church of Philippi, saying, show them, that you're, show them your body and show them how you have become well through their prayer. And the name Epaphroditus came from a Greek goddess named Aphrodite. And his parents were absolute strong believers of the Greek god gods and goddesses. And as a result, they named their son after their own goddess. And he was born in a Gentile family, in a family that, that had a, a, gent a different religion, pagan religion. And it was a goddess named Aphrodite. And it was a goddess that 99 out of 100 Greeks believed. However, Epaphrodite, ever since he met Saul or Paul, he converted and came to know the only true God and he received, accepted God, and believed in God. And then his entire family became chaos, Tur just turned over because of that. And Epaphroditus, who began his life through a Gentile goddess, has met Apostle Paul and became a fellow man of faith and became a true soldier of Christ, according to the Bible. Beloved believers, our lives, by meeting somebody, that one somebody, our personality, our lives will change depending on whom we meet. Yeah. Who we meet in our lives is very important. A true turning point for Epaphroditus came when he met Apostle Paul, a man who truly, sincerely believed in God with all his heart, all his mind, and all his soul. And when we meet a friend of faith, when we meet a co-worker of faith, of faith like that, our lives will change also. And so in verses 27 through 30, Epaphroditus, who was faithful, though he, became, he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life, he said, For indeed he was sick to the point of death, verse 27, but God had mercy on him, and not 
on him only, but also on me, so that I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I have sent him all the more eagerly, so that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be less concerned about you. Receive him then in the Lord with all joy, and hold men like him in high regard. And as Apostle Paul was sending Epaphroditus to the church of Philippi, he gave him a letter to, to give to them. And he said, Re receive him with joy and con consider him in high regard as you receive him. And he was telling the church of Philippi to, to receive Epaphroditus with high regard because he did not even care for his own life. He worked so hard that he became sick, Epaphroditus. And Paul prayed sincerely before God. And God's mercy and compassion came upon Epaphroditus, and he was healed. And the church of Philippi heard the news all along. And he said, hurry up and go to the church of Philippi. They need to see you, that you're well. You're well. I was concerned about you when I couldn't see you. They must be really concerned to have heard that you are sick and you are about to die. You have to hurry up and go show yourself to, to, those, to the church so that they don't, have, they don't worry anymore. And so Epaphroditus took Apostle Paul's letter and went. And Epaphroditus wanted to sh uh, needed to show that he was able to find life again through the prayer of Apostle Paul and the church. He gave his efforts. He gave great service to the church and to the work of Christ. I mean, in the prison you can't sleep comfortably. Apostle Paul just could not fall asleep because he was sick. And he was, just imagine taking, having to take care of him every day. Worried about the church of Philippi. Concerned. And his sickness became worse and worse. From over exhaustion. The, the seriousness of his disease. Why? Because he, it says that he, became, he came close to death. But in the, even in the midst of his sickness, he was more concerned about Apostle Paul who was in prison. And so he served him, helped him, and did all kinds of work for him, big or small. And Apostle Paul confessed, he loved me more than his own life. The word Epaphroditus means the one uh, uh, attractive one, and second, it means to it means a petite man, and third, a man of task, a man of mission, and he it, he lived to the to fulfill his name. He was a man. Uh, he was an attractive man. He was a um, a man of task. He loved Apostle Paul so much. He considered Apostle Paul very important and precious. And so Apostle Paul, as he was praying to God, he's <coughs> he gave five nicknames to Epaphroditus. According to Philippians chapter 2, verse 25, Apostle Paul gave five names or five names to, for for Epaphroditus, but I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus. First, he's my brother. My, he said he's my brother. And second, he said a fellow worker. And third, a fellow soldier. He's, he's a soldier of the gospel along with Apostle Paul. And fourth, your messenger. And fifth, administer to my need. 
in the Old Testament and the New Testament, all throughout the Bible, a person, there, a person that did not look after himself, uh, his own self, but worked and served God and Apostle Paul to the point of death. Apostle Paul, look at how Apostle Paul prayed for him and understood the Word of God. And so may Pyongyangjie Church, if Pyongyangjie Church had even a person that is like Epaphroditus, the world would turn over. How precious, important is this? How precious is this? My brother, a fellow worker, a fellow soldier, who is also your messenger and minister to my needs. And first, Epaphroditus is my brother. It's referring to spiritual brother. A bro uh, referring to a person who lives according to the will of our God the Father who is in heaven. And the, and the church, and the government and the church became, came and persecuted his, uh, Jesus' Jesus's mother and his brothers, saying, how did you raise your son that he be, he's causing all kinds of chaos in the country? And they, the mother and the brothers of Jesus came to see him, and Jesus screamed and said, who is my brother? Who is my mother? Look at all these people who are receiving the word of God. They are my mother and they, they're my brothers and sisters. Matthew chapter 12, verses 40 through 45. Mark chap and Luke chapter 8, verses 19 through 22. And a, a woman came to Jesus, bowed down to him and said, you must be the true Messiah, Jesus Christ. And how blessed is your is the breast of your mother, and the, how precious and blessed is the womb of your mother who contained you for ten months. And Jesus became angry at that. The breast that have have fed me, and the womb that have given birth to me. More than that, the people who receive the word of my Father are the, bless, uh, are the ones who are blessed. And Luke chapter 12, verses 20, and the following tells us that. And uh, when Apostle Paul said, Epaphroditus is my brother, <coughs> it's not just, just simple physical brother, but it is my brother with a position. First, per first person possession. It's not just the, just the name, but it refers to the relationship between uh, Apostle Paul and Epaphroditus. How close they are. They have become one. Cannot be detached from each other. They're, they're one in the heart, one in the will, one in the mind, in the way they love the church, the way they prayed for other people with compassion. They were, they were one in all those, and so they were brothers in the Spirit. And so Apostle Paul and Epaphroditus were just one, attached together. It's not you and me separately. He, they considered each other as their own body, considered it me altogether. Considering each other. And if we have the power to do that with somebody, that is great power. And Apostle Paul gained Epaphroditus, and vice versa, Epaphroditus gained Apostle Paul. And so in his last years, Apostle Paul, uh, in the last years of Apostle Paul, Epaphroditus became a great strength great hope same for Epaphroditus in his life because of Apostle Paul he came to know God 
he was able to come into the order of salvation. A true friend, a true brother they were to each other. And so Epaphroditus, in, in th this connotation, he said, he's my brother. In the Church of Philippi, treated Epaphroditus as their own brother's own brother too. And if there's a person like Epaphroditus in our church, as we see in verses 19 through 30, in all that you do, your business, your work, all the things that you plan in your head, in your mind, please believe that the blessings of Abraham will come upon you. Secondly, a fellow worker. He's a worker. He doesn't rest his hands and feet. He's a man who works. He's a worker. His service is a courageous service. It's a service that gave his own life. When Apostle Paul was to, was to be beheaded, he could have been beheaded too. Because, because he was... He, he could have been accused as a person who supported the greatest rebel of the nation. And as a result, he could have been beheaded uh, along with Apostle Paul. Knowing that, he still served Apostle Paul. Knowing that he might be killed along with Apostle Paul. And Paphroditus. It's a work that gave up his life. He worked with his his head on the line. And in verse 30 it says, Because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was deficient in your service to me. And he had, his work was great. Epaphroditus sincerely, fervently loved the Church of Philippi. Not in the form saying, Oh, good to see you. Did you have a good week? Not in the, for, in the formality, but he sincerely, from deep in his heart, loved the Church. Epaphroditus was, the, was a man of prayer, always awake in, in prayer for all, all the members of the Church. Third, a fellow soldier, Epaphroditus, along with Apostle Paul, was a soldier that worked for the enlargement, for the kingdom of God. He became one with Apostle Paul and did not hesitate in fighting against the forces of Satan to destroy them. When Apostle Paul spoke to him the Word of God, he, did, he believed as it is. Did not, he did not doubt it. What Apostle Paul said to Epaphroditus, he took it as the Word of God. He did not reject it or, or doubt it. Is there anybody in this modern society like Epaphroditus? Everybody is all about themselves. They are so busy for their own work and they barely have enough time to come to church. But Apostle Paul said to Timothy, a true soldier is not tied down by his own life. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 tells us, A man who is a soldier does not get tied, up, tied down by his own life in order to, give, uh, in order to please those who gather the soldiers. Those who command the soldier. And Epaphroditus, along with Apostle Paul, was a courageous soldier for God. He put his life, he gave his life up to protect the, the kingdom of God and the church and the people of God, just as soldiers would give up their lives 
for the nation, for justice. He lived an organized, orderly life. He did not look around and sneak away from the church so that he doesn't have to work, but everything was voluntary. Epaphroditus did not come off track from the word of truth, from the march of the soldiers of God. And he was sincerely, faithfully, and up honestly worked. Epaphroditus, according to the Bible, was always awake and alert for the will of the Lord. 